guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we are going to start an experiment. So in Hockey Ultimate Team, too often, I hit myself this whole year, I've been trapped in this Gaming World Championship mentality. I think that's just a product of Hockey Ultimate Team, especially because there is just no new content and things to do in the game for the last three years. And it's all been centered around what are the meta cards in NHL 22. And I'm not going to lie, that's just become extremely boring, and you guys have said the same thing to me. I've watched your comments, I've seen the feedback. It's just boring to review cards in that manner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track all of my stats from every Rivals game I play. I'm in Division 1, I don't do the matchmaking glitch, and I play Hut Champs. No! So, essentially, I'm going up against the best competition that's on PS5, just based on the division. So I'm going to show you guys my stats and what that means individually per player. So, how could this really impact your playstyle? Well, I'll be honest with you. Once you hit a certain peak in NHL, the way that the video game is played, let's say you hit Division 3 and you play about 50 games and you go down and then up and you're stuck at Division 3. That means that's your peak and the only way that you're ever going to break that is by learning a new mechanic learning some new strategies or watching some better players in terms of the vision and things that they look for if you just keep using the same strategy that you've been using you simply will not get better at the game it is just how nhl works in 1v1 online and that's completely okay i think too often especially for myself i get wrapped up in you gotta be division one i mean if you're not then why are you even playing the game and that's just super boring and honestly kind of dumb on my part so what i want to do is i I want to see if I can help you guys improve by realizing which cards actually work for each position. Now, obviously, the meta is whoever is the biggest and fastest. That's been the case for the last three seasons, really, of Hockey Ultimate Team. And because the game hasn't improved at all and innovated at all in terms of its gameplay, it's really just the same thing. However, that might not be the same for every single player. I'll give you an example. There is a stat at the end of each Rivals game that shows your puck possession per player. Now, for whatever reason, there is absolutely no stat tracking outside of Hockey Ultimate Team that's in two Sure, you can go and look at your overall stats, and that'll include squad battles and online, but you can't reset it. You can't set pages to start tracking those stats. So you're essentially just locked into, okay, my guy spent 50 games in, in on the fourth line, and now I've got to go and see how he does when he plays in the first line, and there's no way to reset those stats or look at it anyway. It also, for whatever reason, doesn't track the time on possession stat, which is really important. That determines how much you're carrying the puck with that specific player. So I'm going to track all of my stats for rivals and i'm gonna see if i can help determine which players that work per position i'll give you an example right-handed wingers maybe i have no puck possession time with them but i have a lot of my offense and shots with them that would kind of indicate to me that I don't really need to care about speed at all and just the biggest players will do. I don't need to worry about speed because I'm not carrying the puck with them. I need to make sure their shots and maybe their zone abilities and superstar abilities need to match that and have really good shooting abilities. Another example was maybe I carry the puck with my defenseman a ton. That would indicate that I maybe need faster defensemen because I'm trying to break the puck out too much with my defenseman. It'll also maybe help me indicate which strategies I'm using that just aren't working. And then obviously for goaltenders, that's pretty simple. All right, guys, if you enjoy the content let me know in the comment section down below this will be a few videos for this series and i'm curious to see the outcome if you guys want to watch it live twitch.tv slash no sleeves 12 i go live at 2 p.m every single day all right guys let's get into it all right so to set us up i have played eight games of division one rivals and hut champs and i'll show you guys my stats in just a second for it and this is the lineup that i went with because this is what well a i wanted to test out patrick kane and b this is really what i have just been using because it's like the meta and the things that have just been so ingrained in how you play this game at the highest level and i've just been stuck with it and honestly i'm not having any fun anymore so i want to see if certain players work better for me and maybe this will help me help you guys a little bit more when giving you team advice my defense is pretty you know meta-ish you know you've got brent burns and headman got cleft bomb and weber and then adam fox who has just been really disappointing because obviously he can't knock players off the puck and i've just had him on the third line however after these stats, I might have to change that. And then Bowmeister. In net, I've got Pekka Rene. And to give you guys just a uh, showing of what I'm using for zone abilities, I'll walk you through that real quick. And I'm not changing them for the first 20 games. I'm going to do this in section of 20 games, and we're going to see how it turns out. So because I wanted to test out Patrick Kane, I'm using Snipe, Unstoppable Force, Close Quarters on him. I've got Elite Edges on Duchesne, Elite Edges on McDavid. And then I've got Post to Post. I don't even have light work on Pekka Rene. And I also have some offensive ones. One on Clefbaum, I've got Elite Edges on Larkin, I've got Close Quarters on Jokinen, and then I've got 1T on Victor Hedman, and then uh, 
truculence, I believe, on Weber. Yeah, that looks to be all. And that's all I'm using. So now you guys know what I'm working with. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. All right, guys. So here is the spreadsheet through my first eight games. And I went three and five in those games. Again, I'm playing Division One, So I should be going up against the best competition. I am not doing the matchmaking glitch. So I'm getting true Division One opponents. And obviously, with the build I have, it's not really working. But I'm going to stick with it for this experiment to see if maybe my actual switching and tracking can actually help improve my ability online so we'll take a look we'll see over here on my forwards they're all matched up in terms of lines so Kairu Kane and Duchesne is my first line McDavid Larkin McKinnon Lemieux Jokin and Hurdle and then Ranton and Barzal and Gretzky now just taking a look at this my second line of McDavid Larkin and McKinnon has been my worst in terms of plus minus so Larkin and McKinnon both my both minus three and then McDavid is a minus one but they've been pretty decent in terms of point output so I've got five points with McDavid David, which would be second on my team right behind Kyra who's got six and then Larkin with only two and then McKinnon with five so right off the rip in terms of points the one thing that I'm noticing is that my centers don't have any offense really like if we look at my first line Kyra and Kane have six and five points respectively Duchesne's only got three on my second line, I've got McDavid and McKinnon both with five. Larkin's only got two. And then on my third, Lemieux and Hurdle both have two and four, which Lemieux's down a little bit, which is a little surprising to me because he's one of my favorite cards to use. However, he's down in the third line now. But Jokinen has three. And then on my fourth line, Gretzky has three, but Ranted and Barzal both have three and two. So my centermen don't appear to be involved in the offense all that much. So... My thinking is that on defense, my centermen are much more important than I'm paying attention to. So what that might mean is that I might not need to have someone overpowered like Dylan Larkin, who's extremely fast, because I'm not really having any offense with him. I might be able to use someone much bigger and slower because I'm prioritizing defense over offense when it comes to these players. Another thing is that I'm clearly taking advantage of how overpowered my lineup is at the bottom so while my first and second lines aren't really all that great in terms of plus minus in fact they're mostly minus players my fourth line of team of the year ranton and barzal and gretzky which is pretty incredible and there's very few players that can actually do that that is where i'm taking advantage of so what i might want to do is focus more on those matchups later in the game or later in the period and because ranton and barzal and gretzky are obviously taking advantage of people's worst cards so that might be something i want to pay attention to a little bit more another thing is that my offense is extremely balanced on forwards like Kane or Kairu has four or three goals Kane has four I've only scored about 24 goals in eight games just because I haven't been all that great offensively in these games that I have played and really it's just completely balanced except for Rantanen has three McDavid has two Kane and Kairu both are obviously driving the play so offensively it isn't like one position is dominating I'm really balanced all the way throughout so again while sticking with forwards the puck possession time this is the one stat guys that is tracked after each game in rivals and hut champs and i believe squad battles as well but it is not tracked in your actual stat screen which is why i think doing it manually is going to be a much more effective way to actually see how your stats are doing than by just trying to do it in game so again i don't know why ea can't do this they have no leaderboard it's been years um, I've been trying to make sure and all the game changers really have been trying to hammer home that we need some stats in game like we have it's ridiculous that it's 2022 and we can't have simple stats in game that I have to do this kind of stuff but regardless that's a whole other thing when it comes to puck possession time this was also a pretty interesting so when it comes to the players I'm carrying the puck with especially on my second line you'll see McKinnon's got 12 minutes and 44 seconds he carries the puck more than anyone on my team and he's on the second line he's also on the second pass power play unit so I do want to I would do want to make sure that's clear but it's odd to me that he is the one that I'm carrying the puck with more than anyone else and he does have four assists so right-handed winger four assists in the most time with the puck meaning that I'm breaking the puck down the left-hand side of the boards or I'm trying to control the puck with him because he's on his off wing and I'm trying to force it over uh to the the left-handed players like McDavid who has two goals on this line and obviously much less time on attack even on my first line you see Kairu up here at 12 31 he is my first line right-handed winger and Kane and Duchesne are much more behind them because again I'm just carrying it with my right-handed winger the one anomaly here is my third line and I'm trying to pay attention to it a little bit more in game but Lemieux I only have seven minutes with which is almost the lowest on my team it's by far the lowest outside of my fourth line and then Jokinen on this line I carry it more with which is so odd because 
it's a pretty drastic jump. It's almost two minutes compared to my two wingers. So that is quite odd to me. And then on my fourth line, it's pretty balanced. Gretzky is the one I'm carrying the puck with the most. And then again, you'll see here, left-handed winger, Rantanen is the one that is least. So again, left-handed wingers, I'm carrying the puck with a lot less, meaning that I don't need to require, I don't need to prioritize speed, I don't think. And it, I've just been hammering that home because obviously those are the guys that I'm shooting the puck with more because I'm not carrying the puck with them at all. So my right-handed wingers they might be the ones that need to be the fastest for me whereas my left-handed wingers they might be the ones where they can be like six foot five and just have a really good shot i'm also tracking penalties as well as hits face-offs uh, just to see if that matters at all uh, in terms of penalties the only one that has six well sorry the one that's leading is duchene as well as mckinnon uh which is a little odd but there's really nothing out of the ordinary here because they're all basically spread out so it's not like i'm taking a penalty of just one player specifically in terms of hits uh, i'm not hitting with kane which isn't surprising at all he's uh very when it comes to division one kane has not been a very good competitive player i find that he gets knocked up the puck so easy there's a lot less space when you start playing division one in hut champs and that's why the cards like kane really struggle in that aspect um so I, nothing really surprising there among my forwards and then face-offs i've been killing it on the draw and honestly that's something i'm extremely good at is face-offs um, so nothing really surprising there. I'm, I'm right around the same all the way through. So it looks like that's just, that's good, I guess. All right, guys, now on to defensemen. You'll see here Burns and Hedman is my first pairing. Clefbaum and Weber is my second pairing. And then Fox and Bowmies are on my third. And just taking a look at the stats here. So in terms of goals, Hedman has two. Weber and Clefbaum each have one. Obviously, I'm not scoring a lot from the point, And I really don't think anyone is in this game. Um, point shots have just been... I don't know if it's the abilities on goaltenders or just the way that they've changed the animations or something. Point shots just don't go in simply as much as they used to, which might not be a bad thing, but it is pretty jarring year over year that point shots just are almost not viable, especially right-handed point shots. Um, and, and I'm not talking about firing a wrister through. I'm talking about one-timers. It appears that left-handers, so going from right to left on the offhand, uh, guys like Hedman, they can hammer the puck home, especially if they have one T. I do have one T activated with Hedman. However, the thing that I'm pretty surprised about is uh, my first, both of my defensemen both had three assists, and maybe that, I guess that isn't all that surprising, but when you take a look at points, Hedman's got the second most points on my team, and he has just been such a good card. I think that it is... Um, just it just kind of drives home the fact that that card is going to be one of the best all year defensively and offensively uh when it comes to plus minus clefbaum and weber negative three and minus one and they're the only negative d pair that i have which just kind of hammers home for me that they only have 91 speed both of them the ones that i'm using and it might mean that i need someone faster but again headman and burns they're fine so I, again i don't really know what that entails but i might try after these 20 games to switch fox up in the lineup because he is a plus one and i noticed that i just you know I, I might need someone a little bit faster to help me out when it comes to puck possession with my defenseman this one's pretty surprising because Hedman is by far the player that I carry the puck the most with out of the whole game. 13 minutes, 51 seconds in eight games. And again, no other forward has 13 minutes. But then you have Burns at 11.56, which would rank third among forwards. And then you have Weber, again, on my second pairing defense with 11 minutes, which is quite high as well. And then it just completely drops off. Again, your third pairing... I've said this throughout the year. It just does not matter. They are not on the ice enough to have an impact. So if you are hot rich or you're even if you're free to play, I think that you can almost ignore your third pairing defense until the rest of your team is absolutely stacked. And again, I think that just kind of hammers home the point right here. But clearly, I'm not doing very well in Division 1 right now. So what I'm seeing here is what's happening isn't working really effectively. So maybe big defensemen for me personally, one on my defensive pairs are great, but maybe that second one needs to be really fast. I'm thinking like Morgan Riley's master, maybe Subban or moving Fox up in the lineup and maybe throwing off some of that defensive pressure, but allowing me to carry the puck out and be a lot faster, and maybe create some plays off the rush with those faster defensemen. Again, that's just what I'm seeing here because the puck possession I have with these guys is crazy but i'm not winning so it's not like things are working i'm just trying to use these stats to see if i can dictate some change in my lineup the other thing i see here is that when it comes to hits it's not even close victor Hedman has 17 hits so i'm crushing people with my defenseman uh in terms of offense or my offenseman i'm not at all i'm obviously relying on the stick a lot more because when you look at the penalties on my team Hedman's only taken two minutes, so one penalty, and Clefbaum as well, but my forwards have all taken penalties, which kind of leads me to believe that I'm just using 
the R1 on my forwards, and I'm not really body checking at all. But when it comes to defensemen, they're obviously doing a lot better in that aspect. So something I might want to change in my gameplay style. So guys, like I said, this is part one. What I will do is I'll upload a few more videos showing you guys more stats. Maybe once I get to 20 games, we'll take a look. And then we'll make some lineup choices and decisions and see if that can just improve my performance overall. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, guys, and some other things that you might want to see when it comes to team building. But I think this will help me provide you guys with more information and better in terms of building your teams. Because, like I said, unless you are dedicated to changing the mechanics and things and how you play, you're really just going to stay in the same. However, it might be because you're trying to just use all of the meta cards, and I think that, that was lazy on my part. And I want to see if I can get more creative when it comes to offering you guys some team building advice. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll see you next time.